My wife brought this to me like last year like I'm so sorry I was moving this case and then it fell and then the whole thing just shattered. oh my gosh oh my gosh oh wow but this was um was that Mike's? Mike's yeah oh, no. oh that's the one I yeah I had made so I had it in a case at my house like up on a shelf and somehow the thing dropped down and it just managed to shatter it. oh you got to save that oh, that's I remember like, I remember I making that I don't know how it shattered so bad but the thing was like totally busted i remember giving it Sorry, to, to mike no I no i had given it back i just remember horrible. giving it to him and he really no i, I mean, just was like hey man i, I don't just know why yeah, I have a gift for you and he was like blown away cabinet that looks like that went on a rock like, and roll rampage or that was yeah it. yeah no, they yeah, got you, the pete townsend yeah, yeah exactly the pete townsend <laughs> the pete townsend model well we got a lot of fighting on that was hendrix it comes broken yeah put it exactly oh man that thing is that really got wrecked. You got to read some of the signatures on there. Yeah. Maybe mahogany. Nah. I always thought it mahogany. was kind of like tacky, the, the, the whole like spruce, right? the checkered and the um, herringbone. But then some people just love that. I always thought it was a bit much, but. It was. Yeah. But Mike, but Mike was a bit much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. Saying, and, I and a lot of us were ready to just follow him into <laughs> yeah, too much like land. If you knew Mike for over a year, like you had at least three or four, you know, MGM stories. You know, something oh, happened. Sure. <laughs> I think you, as a f matter of fact, you introduced me to him. Oh yeah, in sorry about that. That was my first. Nah, nah, nah. It could have been my first name. No, nah, that was a that was a meeting made in heaven because he um, was you know perfect to be right there with you at the beginning kind of throwing around ideas and stuff yeah he was uh, just a bundle of energy man right right up to his last day yeah and even at the end he's he's just like staying positive like i had a good life man i love you thank you you know it's like cool but um but music guy mike was uh was was uh, an integral part of kind of forming what we became because he he had like Chris and Joel, you know that we then took on and then and then Mike started working with us. But um, no, he was he he wanted to get people. He wanted to make them happy and get them the right the uke that they yeah were just stoked with you know exactly. And so that same business model was like was what we wanted to try to do from the beginning. Joel was was initially hired by you or Mike? I think he was hired by Mike. Yeah. And Mike had his own. I remember the first time I met Joel, we were unloading a container. I think he was. You know, it's amazing. He applied to work at Higher Ground even before he worked for Mike. And I was like, this kid is too shy or I don't know. It just goes <laughs> like Joel has been like the best. Yeah. What? I mean. When you unload a container, you see someone unload a container, you can see their work ethic. Because I remember he was yeah. the hot Hawaii sun in the summer. Yeah, yeah. I think, were you there? Yeah, you were there, Mike. Yeah, I mean. I think there's people afraid to sweat and not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just a hard worker. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But no, I, I, I remember Mike and going to his house and always would crack up because he, he set up table was on top of his mom's dryer yep you know <laughs> it's funny we talked about that last episode about the or washing machine and dryer uh, yeah and his yep. mom yelling at him for getting <laughs> steel wool in the lint trap and, <laughs> yeah. i mean the whole house was just full of ukes everywhere it's like his parents yeah. were just the mom was always just like ah, michael <laughs> you know but it was uh it was his enthusiasm that i think got a lot of people going and it's that same kind of vibe that we want to continue with you know that that same thing of getting getting people excited keeping them excited giving them you know fun new products that help keep them inspired you know and um you guys have been great partners for us in that through the years by really trying to continue to zero in on great value instruments that look beautiful uh 
I guess, constantly working on the, the quality and, and consistency and all those kind of things, you know? So I didn't say it officially yet. So thank you so much for joining us. And today we have with us Pat, Mike, and Dave from Collar Brand Music Company. Oh, uh, he goes by KP. Yeah. KP. Oh, Collar Pat. Pat. Yeah, yeah. Collar Pat. <laughs> <laughs> He had a legal name change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Patrick has been servicing us for many years. We met him as Patrick. We'd call him Patrick. Then it turned to Pat. Yeah. It was like, hey, buddy. And then it turned into KP in uh, Petaluma. Yeah. What? So yeah. how did that happen? Uh, I think it was because I've been working here for, like, what, 80 years now with Kala, <laughs> which is really awesome. So you might uh, as well just be Kala Pat already. Yeah, because, like, I, I do all the models and I knew all those a lot of specs and right, 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 right. things like that. So they're like any questions that people had, they always ask me at the sales floor. Yeah, what does the uh, SSTUT stand for? Well, <laughs> call a pat, ask yeah. call a pat. Glad you asked. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's my favorite when, you know, people are on their phone and they're like explaining a column model and they just do the abbreviations. And then I'm like, oh, you got the solid spruce top uh, tenor. They're like, oh, well, how did you, <laughs> he just read it out to me. You know, it's yeah. just like, um, well, thanks know. for keeping it fairly consistent through the years. You know, I mean, yes. there's been some changes here and there, but it's it's been fairly on. You know, I, like we've been selling SMHTs as long as I can remember. You know, there's the the ASAC Ts turned into the SATs and whatnot, but you know, for the most part, yeah, I was totally against that, man. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, there's something about <laughs> consistency, right? Yeah. And searching names and being able to know yeah and it should you should be able to denote what type of instrument it is from the model number that was always my thing yeah Yeah. how's it changed mike for for you in the past say like five years even well i think ukulele just kind of has reached new heights in terms of the popularity and the um the impact it's had i think it's brought so many new musicians into music that you know that otherwise may have missed missed out on um kind of discovering music because ukulele is so uh it's an engaging instrument it's brought continue to bring so many people into into music and i think that still is the key thing is that the um the instrument itself is very engaging, very welcoming. People are so you there's see just like a, a new vibe countries about it. taking on more, or um. uh, I think yeah, it's expanded. There's it's literally all over the world now. Yeah, and it uh, there's how, a how many countries are you guys sending ukes to? Probably at least fifty, um, nice. whether they're just to stores or to distributors. But I think it's it's really literally everywhere it's and crazy it, uh, huh? yeah it transcends i mean it's not crazy but it's it's like it's cool that it's no i think it's there. really a universal instrument in that it's really transcending um cultures and uh any boundary i mean that yeah. uh and that's a wild thing when it you know kind of emanated out of There's where we are right all here, over the know? world that are you know right now being like this is perfect for what we need to teach a group of kids or you and know, they everybody seems to translate it traveling just right into their own music or mm-hmm. their own situation you know no matter if it's culturally into their own music right, right. it seems to work um yeah. and so that that's kind of a i don't know any other instruments that really do that i mean maybe percussion or drums or something but not a instrument with notes you know maybe piano i but Right, right, right. You, know, you don't think guitar would do that same thing, or I think it could. I think, but I think uke is maybe just because of its size, because even it's, more transcending. Yeah, it, you know, obviously a little easier to get going on. It's less um, intimidating. Oh, for sure, yeah. accessible. And the it, price and all that, you know, typical yeah. things. Yeah, four versus six, steel versus nylon. You know, it's just a little bit more inviting for you know the starting starting point. But as far as I think people are now realizing that you can get complex, you can create emotion with this instrument. You know, you look at after Ukulele Festival, hearing Jake twice because he played the back tent and, yeah. and the front tent. Mm-hmm. But I got to hear him twice, and it's just hearing his 
Corey Fujimoto play the ukulele is so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Green. Whoa. What is it? Tunnel hole. Louis Sorry, Yellow. Mr. Fujimoto Turn just walked through the door. There's this, uh, there's a guy who plays on, I forgot his name, but he goes by something one string, but he, there's a tiny desk performance. Bushy one string. Yeah, yeah. From Africa. Just one string. And it's like, if you can, if you can make music with one string, it's like, that's where it's at. You're telling a story, you're, you're creating your emotion, and it's just one string. So, ukulele has got four of them. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, you can definitely yeah, make some beautiful music. <laughs> yeah. It's like... You know, you just gotta, you just gotta love it. Get in, dive into it. We don't do summer nam, but maybe you guys can like fill us and the folks following us in on what what you guys showed this year. Or I mean, just because Pat was telling me there was a new model. Yeah, there's a a couple new super tenor. Um, yeah, like cedar zircote, like a solid zircote. Am I wrong? Um, no, it's we have an all solid mahogany, mahogany yeah. um, super tenor, so it's a 19, oh. 19 inch scale. And okay, we've seen one of those, I think we did. Yeah, a wide video. lower bow, right. and then that there was the um, solid spruce oh, with I believe it's Pau Ferro back and sides. Uh, Could be Zeracote, but that was a, uh, is it Zeracote super Can you keep tenor an eye on that with one? solid yeah. spruce. Yeah. And okay. then uh, pal fer solid pal ferro with a uh, cedar top. The, the okay, one that has that I stand maple, corrected. Uh, what I really like is the body size in the neck. It just and then the you know yeah, which is like what Corey has in his hands right there. It's exactly it's an import version of that. Yeah, body style, not the woods and scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit wider on the lower bout there. Yes. It's a little more of, of a jumbo shape to it. I like it. Kind of, yeah. But the tone, man, that's what trips me out about this. That's why I have this pulled out. We've done sound samples on this before, but like, it just, it really. It records well, too. Right? It, it just like, sounds awesome. And it's all maple, which to me, like, has commonly been like a really bright. Yeah. Well, and you do hear the brightness, but it's got that low end. It's got the body. It's got but the warmth. It's almost like it doesn't. It doesn't get muddy. Yeah, so that's that's like a lot of people the... liked maple for recording, but especially like sides and back, you know, with a spruce top on, like a, a lot of like nylon string guitars for studio pieces because of that articulation and not getting muddy. But then you guys did it with a even the beautiful flame maple top. No, I mean, it's such a common wood, and yet, you know, I mean... I mean, it's been used... You see so many in koa you see the, all these dark instruments, and that's great. I mean, but... Yeah. And maybe initially people are like, oh, you know, but once you hear it, it's like, whoa, there's something going on here. I've always had an affinity for the, for the flame maple look, but um, talk about the new bracing system and how you guys ended up... Um, kind of changing things up with your elite line. I just know that we were not satisfied with the sound that we were getting, and um, <clears throat> and they were just experimenting our, our shop guys with different patterns, and that you know X bracing is pretty common, traditional. Yeah, sure. But I mean, <clears throat> once they did it on the. Um, Super tenor, it's it was like wow that really. I because I, I remember these there. were the first models you did that on. That yeah, and that Myrtle Spruce one. Yeah, and then we tried it on the regular tenors, and it yeah it seemed to work really well. Um, and, and I so think the they entire experimented line now, right? with concert. Yeah, and I don't know if it's been implemented in the concert, but I mean it just seemed like a something a better different. system there. Yeah, um, so it was really just messing with different pattern i mean there's only I mean, so not many only did do, it but... seem to open up the liveliness as far as right off the bat you know yeah i mean i think but also like they seem very well seated like they seem very structurally there's not like movements on the tops on the that you can see on a lot of instruments uh they seem very all, all, you know stable to last many years and and still it's done in a way that um you're getting a really um, a lot of body out of a small instrument so it can't be over braced so it's just kind of hitting those lines 
It's nice. No, exactly. I mean, it's and hopefully that yeah, people enjoy it and like it. It's I think it's I mean, look at yeah, Martin guitars. I mean, it's kind of it's a tried and true pattern, but on Ukes, I was that BGM a little too loud. Sorry. <laughs> why don't Why don't we get a little sample? We've been talking about this sound. See that precision passing right there? Nice. <laughs> See that Aaron Rodgers pass? Were you a quarterback once? Oh, yeah. I got the scars to prove it. Mm-hmm. I feel like every quarterback breaks a collarbone, yeah? So like easy. Every single... It's like chopsticks over here. <laughs> <laughs> so easy, man. It's the easiest bone. I remember my brother, like, it was the Lelihua game. Yeah. And, like, they did a, he had, like, a late hit. And then... It wasn't even like a hit. It, they grabbed him and like somebody like shoved him down and just. Yeah, so we that's the way you land because if you, I landed straight up and down, so when the pressure when the guy landed on me, I could just hear it and feel like. Oh. Yeah, it was probably about like three hundred pounds or something too. Yeah. Six five, two fifty. That noise too. Ooh. Yeah. Dave looks like he could have played some ball. Yeah. I played some football, but I mostly wrestled. Oh, uh, wrestler. Yeah. Because I was horrible at that, only because I was like horrible that at basketball. Huh? Yeah. You want to just tie people up and make them beg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but but when you grow but up maybe. in New Jersey and Staten <laughs> Island, it's, it's good to have some extra skills. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you got to make people laugh, one or the other, right? Right. You know. Or make them laugh as you're. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this one or the other, <laughs> both. Yeah. Never look into a half Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's hear this all flame maple tenor, 19 inch scale. So, you guys, you guys, thank you. You guys hear what I'm talking about? I'm not fluffing it up. I, I give you guys the truth, you know. And the Kala Elite line now is not to be trifled with. It is a serious contender in think, all realms most of ukulele. Most impressive, like with this wood, I guess. Um, it's like it's it's not. It's like right in the middle of bright and like warm. warm. Yeah. But then with some especially spruce like if you really dig into it and you want to get more volume you can get like really harsh I I wonder if it's because of what you usually match up spruce with with as far as the back and sides because this is all maple so it's like it's great because we have the opportunity now to try a new model that they've just released for the elite line and that has um, spruce and also an, an ultimate tone wood for the side and back ebony gorgeous ebony on these we got a number of different models we're about to be putting up check us out like um i'm gonna strum kind okay. of hard so if you i don't want to blow everybody's ears oh out, so. blow but me like, away buddy <laughs> that's called 
dynamics. But it doesn't ever get muddy. It's still really clear, but it's like I just spit. I saw it in the light. It was like pew. You know, like slow motion. Like. <laughs> That's how good the ook was. <laughs> yeah. He's salivating. salivating. <laughs> that make Corey drool. You know, I love I love this tone, but it's just like you know, like we meet those people who are like, oh it sounds much like a guitar. And I was like, why 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 are you turned off by this like you don't like the sound of guitar okay fine but oh, then yeah. it's just like it's it's kind of weird Same like when spruce. they're looking at a super tenor i'm like what <laughs> you're, you're looking you at the make, bigger thing you can make yeah. something that size sound yeah. like it reminds people of basically the, the same type of instrument but like twice as large that's kind of a good thing it's like wow then you know it, it sounds huge yeah. for its size but it does have a guitar sound. Um, I want to hear, though, compare it with this Torrified Spruce. So um, maybe one of you guys can talk to that, speak to the Torrification and um, why, why you decided to offer this model with it. Sounding I'm trying cool. to remember why. <laughs> uh, I think it was, it was really as much to do with the the color of the top i mean i know that sounds yeah it looks it, but, well, but I mean, I, it looks almost like you could put regular spruce time. on there but we yeah. had some torrified yeah. spruce sets and we were like well let's this looks really good when you laid it against the uh Mikasa ebony well people are art you know they'll, they'll argue about whether you know how much it affects the tone or oh well it become better sounding after that or does it matter and stuff like that but originally i think it was designed to emulate these um custom builders that were building like the pre-war you know era style instruments trying to make these like look as vintage authentic as possible brand new right yeah. um and and it it does it takes like I don't know about what it exactly it does, uh, you know, to the tone. I mean, you know, people talk about how it does that same sort of aging thing to it, but looks-wise, it definitely looks like forty-year-old spruce. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know about the tone. I, I just think that it looks because cool. I, I was like, well, let's put a cedar top on it because that's kind of the, the color it is. But it's no, there's it's real like, reasons well, why like bourgeois and different people are all about like you bourgeois. know tonally the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but no, you I know, there's tonal comparing. reasons why people love it, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, it's always hard to quantify those kind of things. Like, is it 17% better sounding? <laughs> what does that mean? That's very subjective. Yeah. I mean, well, let's listen to it. Yeah. Yes.
know, comparing with the maple, I just hear like a whole lot more complex overtones going on with this one, you know. What it's do you like guys a, hear? A lot, of, a lot of the bass realm, uh, you know. The, the notes are hanging out longer. Yeah, a lot the, of sustain. Yeah, the maple kind of like lets it out. You hear the note very clear and then it, it's gone. But w- with this, you kind of hear it yeah. green. And making and, more music. And there's inside. more than yeah, just yeah, the yeah, fundamental yeah. tones. There's a lot going on that just um, makes for a really beautiful, complex overtone to the. Yeah, but especially. It, you, but you still hear the the wideness, the big, like the full sound on both. You know, that they're coming in. Yeah, full. I wouldn't say like that. This one necessarily is louder. I don't know. What do you think, Corey? It's a little louder. A little louder. I mean, no, you that would, one was a little warmer. Which was, I thought this one was going to be a little bit. Warmer. No, but the ebony also I think just adds that really because you know it's like the note articulation. It's very. Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah. And it's good for. Um, I think it's really good for classical mm. music because yeah, you need classical. you need that that nice clarity. Yeah, he- hearing each note um, nicely. Yeah. I like how you guys went with the UPTs on this one. How long has the uh, Elite line been out now? Oh, gosh. But three? It's been years. about actually Four? five years. Five years already? Yeah. God, man, time flies because it's like, I, I would have wow. said like three or four years ago. But oh, I mean, no. five or Because it's kind of like gone. I mean, and you guys moved shop. <laughs> like We're we visible for about a year or two, so that may, might explain why it, it seems like it's shorter. What yeah, and it was, launch, it was we didn't really launch it with a big explosion of yeah. marketing. <laughs> I'm sure we were probably among the first to show oh, absolutely. the USA stuff. You guys were you know, you guys were the first supporters, and thank you for that, because you really did give it, a, you took something that was untested. And, you know, we've, we've gone through a lot of, it's been a long process. I mean, we, we're an import company that decided to make American-made ukuleles, I mean, we did everything the opposite way. So yeah. after five years now, but what's what's been uh, the overall like um, where where you're at with it as far as I mean is it is it just gonna get more intense as far as more models? Or are you gonna keep kind of like just keep trying new things? I and feel like 2019. I wish you could just start fresh. I don't know because like I feel like you finally like nailed it. But like, sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to be offensive. Uh, no, I mean I've I've loved I've loved what you've done through the line and there's been amazing sounding instruments that have come through of course but it's like as you kind of find your way then it's like i don't know it's 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 uh yeah it's it's just there it's been more of a, a labor of love than anything because it's um it's a lot of work and we're not myself dave pat we're not builders but we you know we're informing the guys that are building what the feedback is and what we think would work what sounds good and we we've, um, we've been able to work with them too yeah i mean you guys have been instrumental in, in really if it it seems that if it works for you guys it's going to work for well, Andrew, let me people. say this is that a lot of what we have to do is go back to someone like you that all of you guys have great ears and at the end of the day if it works for you then then it works and then getting that constant feedback, you guys have been great in giving that to yeah. us. I mean, I really I mean, do I, appreciate I, it. I feel like Mike Mike knows what's up, and you know, there's a uh, all you guys do too, as far as like seeing the line develop, though. You know, and I'm sure like you're pleased to to see where you're at at this point. I mean, you, and I've seen you gone through a, a few different, you know, managers of of the Luthier team there and stuff, and just, um, but I'm really pleased with all of the instruments we've been getting lately <clears throat> well what you're doing now is the most important thing so i think <laughs> we're you know i'm encouraged to hear the feedback on these new models and um yeah i mean it's it's different because we're we're on the mainland and you've got so many iconic brands here in hawaii uh that how do you stand out? So or, we, we have yeah. to find a kind of a, a little different path. So no, yeah, we've got our, our Koa instruments, but I think instruments like like this and the maple and and I think that like the one like the the sunburst elite, the all maple sunburst, like something like yeah. that too. Because being in the store, you know, like trying to sell something that's oh yeah, I think sold. 
Yeah, so it's just, right it's all r- right away too. But you know, when you have an Alcoa, but then you have you know all the Hawaiian brands, it's like in order to yeah, you, you know, it's just in you put it on you put it on this playing field of like, you know, the customer kind of is looking for Hawaiian made. You yeah. know, they they kind of want that. But then when you when you bring out stuff like like that maple one that's just so gorgeous, like you just kind of kind of shift the you know perspective a little bit. It's not just a coal industry, but like oh. My eyes are just gravitated to it, like you know, looking at it, and yeah. that that was my experience with that sunburst. Is like I kept grabbing it because I just like the look yeah. of that one. I so. mean, yeah, and we, okay, we're on the west coast, so there's a, there's yeah. a lot of woods there, like some represent. of the myrtle myrtle yeah, wood yeah. Yeah. instruments yeah, like we're a doing. Variety of woods that you, you can and choose from. We want to use some local woods, so Excellent you know, we've got some nice sinker redwood and some walnut stuff that's really close to where. You know that grows around where we live. Yeah, to want to use that, but you know, definitely koa is the go-to ukulele I mean, toned wood. But right. I mean, there's a lot of other options. Yeah. So with For models sure. like this, it kind of opens everybody else's eyes. Like, oh, this is. Yeah, there's so much more. There's so much more. Yeah, for sure. I I think we're we're going to be a different customer than somebody like a store in Europe, maybe or something. Like, I mean, for a lot of people, they're like. If you're gonna get a good uke, it's got to be koa. Yeah, you know? like the but then are gonna be like, for our customer, it's like, koa. well, if I'm gonna get koa, I'll probably get a Hawaiian uke. But if I'm gonna just search for, you know, ultimate tone woods and shop in that direction, then everything's game, you know. Mm. And uh, and then there's some people that are gonna just think it's it's cool to you know feature woods from the Northwest or whatever. I mean, you know, every region has. Some but I think that's part words. of part of the you know what's cool because you're you're aloof here in like where we are Petaluma and you're using if it was a hundred years ago you'd be using the woods exactly. that were right around yeah, you. that's all you got if you're in <laughs> Seattle you'd be using yeah. you know spruce and cedar and maples or whatever you could get your hands what on. are they so, using Portugal yeah. I, well yeah you're using your local woods so I think that yeah. that really is you know still yeah. holds true today that's the only reason why ukes are were built with koa <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's, that's what they could chop yeah. down you know now, also like they like you know we they had able to show people that what other woods could sound like and just not koa yeah, right. yeah they sound the pretty beauty good of the no, they sound great they sound amazing <laughs> yeah. i think that's what you guys Things have been like doing for the opening last their ears, ears and eyes to new options hey, have you ever thought about making a uh, elite thin body that'd be cool I just, I just because you know what? I always the, asked that question before. That's a great question. Like a travel? Yeah, because there's a lot of people that come in the shop that um, I question. think are like they they become fans of the the travel. Like they, they'll have a friend like, oh, I'm, I've been wanting to get one. Yeah. And I think a it's great that you guys came out with one. the exotic mahogany. Just another option, a little bit of more affordable. But I, I feel like maybe there should be one more above the spruce top. Like get, give it to that next yeah. level. You know, I think there could be something there. <laughs> I think part of it is um, like I was I've been dealing with this one lady who uh, likes the th- thin body because of shoulder issues that she's having and it's reaching around mm. and so now she's custom ordering one of the Connie Leas that has the arm bevel for that same reason that she felt uh. so she went down to like a concert from her tenor and then got the bevel but what she wanted well what she was asking for was like you know a nice thin body but then you know I mean, there's a there would be a market for that. A travel is my favorite instrument that we make, and we make a lot of instruments. And that question, no one has asked yet, and I haven't even thought about it. But that's something that we really need to think about. But I mean, it's it's not a simple instrument to make. Oh, no, for sure. No, but but that's <laughs> but it, it's bright. The the currently we have the the exotic mahogany. Yep. We have the spruce, and yep. it's it really projects. And, and and that's our our conversation in the store ends up being kind of informing the customer when they pick it up and they strum it. They're like, "Wow, this is a lot more sound than I expected." But it has the curved back, right? The yeah. nice arch back, top. and then uh, the spruce top. So and I think a thinner body. I don't know. This is just my thinking over the years, but it seems that it just pushes out the sound faster, and that's kind of gives it more, that more projecting. Yeah effect i don't know if that's the truth the, you know the truth of what's going on but like when you have a full body i feel like the sound kind of lingers in inside of there and then kind of pushes out but with a thinner body it's kind of like it's going in and then going right back out i was talking to ty it was it is that ty um, rivera yeah mm-hmm. and he's like it comes down to like a physics 
um, of, of the, thing. because because the depth, you know, you cut it in half. There's um, less, yeah, less, less, room less for the room sound for the sound to travel. So yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we got a Yukin today from this guy that builds in Canada, Jake Peters, and um, it's a eight string steel string tenor body, but it's like about half half the width. Oh. But um, I would think like maybe like you could start it off without having to do all that much work by um because it's the same molds and everything it's really the just with how thick your sides are um so that's just cutting your sides thinner and thinner and you can ex like i remember noah did it at one point with his cs models where there was like four or five different models in gradations in terms of um listening back you know and seeing what you want to go with but it's a fairly simple thing to do without if you're not going to try to emulate exactly what the travel series is because it's like a, a laminate pressed back kind of a deal that yeah. would be entirely have different. you guys heard of it called as the pancake model yes yeah. Yeah. okay okay i was like here I, I heard that the first time the other day someone was like i got the pancake collar i'm like the what <laughs> pancake collar <laughs> what are you talking about i've heard that for several years oh uh, see that this was the, my first experience so you guys you are already used to it. no we have a we have a lot of we have a surfing a lot of professional surfers that like the the pancake model the travel you and that's okay. the first time i heard that term used pancake okay. yeah <laughs> okay gotcha I, I didn't know if this lady kind of just coined it herself she's like pancake I heard it. Yeah, I heard it once, and then I was like, like, "Where's the syrup?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I realized like, "Oh, it's the, the first time I heard it." Uh, Roy Sakuma. Oh, really? Called it the pancake. He called it the pancake too. Yeah, the, the, he said somebody else told him, "Oh, the pancake model." But I mean, that's the first I heard it. Right. No, you know, like where it, where it started. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Eight, ten years ago. That's, or that's crazy. So. That's funny how it kind of transcends because none of the call it guys called it coin it pancake but no. some, somewhere along the lines pancake and only here only yeah, only, only in here yeah. yeah never Nowhere in the mainland been called no. a pancake it's oh. a local thing uh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. what was the the lap steel was the frying pan right i wonder where that comes from i never heard it. Lap steel pancake why why pancake just because you know oh, yeah. the thickness of a pancake yeah. i i i call it the thickness of a deck of cards that's, a, that's what I compare it to as far as the thickness but I guess you know double decker pancake uh -huh. uh, it's the same <laughs> I don't know oh man I'm getting hungry oh, yeah hungry, exactly yeah. that's what I was thinking <laughs> <laughs> you got a cool pancake house right around the corner yeah <laughs> you gotta go chemos for uh, breakfast tomorrow so you know I was looking Ooh. at your guys website last night and I was noticing how nice it's so become nice. and continue to become so I, I I went and I looked up this model and you guys have like numerous different ones of the exact same one with picture specific models there and you can select from the drop down the serial number and then it highlights these and each one being different and each one cut out looks like a Photoshop t it looks like some real time and attention here <laughs> towards like getting the end customer great. sale. It's great, but it's not great. <laughs> well, so I'm, I'm just trying to understand the future because I, I, I see like vendors starting to do that when I've talked to some of their dealers. I love the conversation because we constantly talk, Mike and I, about why do things take so long? Well, because there's a lot of, because this takes time and you know this better than anyone. And actually, when I visited here several years ago, I saw all your gear and this gear was here for a reason. You guys take great pictures and a long time ago, I used to buy and sell, um, and and sell on the internet. And I would take the the thing that I would really focus on was taking great, great pictures. And if you're going to buy online, you have to be able to see it. The thing what we do for a living is we're we're selling things that you can hear. So you also have to have a good sound sample. So we have to be able to look at the instrument; it looks beautiful. We have to hear it. But the visuals can't be understated. So there's a lot we have two individuals on staff that video and, and take photographs and they put a lot of time and attention because at the end of the day if you're going to buy something online i mean no I how mean, do you make a me, buying I, decision I unless you want to see it i mean that that yeah. Yeah, abso that absolutely would I buy, you know maybe bam, but i'm just wondering i'm wondering i mean they're all it's all different i mean that one is beautiful man that, 
certainly these these all but they're all different. in order to be sold they should be sold picture specific because Absolutely. Of the nature of what we're talking about here and the level of the instrument it's not so much that it's just looking at the manufacturer and feeling like they're kicking your butt in terms of like like you guys are um i mean have been trusty partners of ours for many years and um we definitely appreciate it but i also i feel like you're also like probably our biggest competitor in in terms of being a professional outlet to choose your instrument from your caller from if you will i mean there's a number of different good dealers out there of course and everybody's you know but there's only one ukulele so yeah. no 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 but, one, but 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 here's the thing like okay so we do this sample and and we list it and it's going to sell but then the samples up there people are like Man, that thing sounds great, but we don't have it in stock. Hey, Pat, can we get that? Oh, yeah, 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 we're getting, okay. So we don't see this for another month and a half. Meanwhile, you guys have four on your website at all times, of course. So it's like the promotional effort that like we put in here, it's like, I don't know. I'm just wondering where the line or how you guys figure out how to like not piss off people like me too, you know? I mean, not like it would make that much of a difference in the sense that I'm going to carry what... I want to carry and if it's good I'm going to carry it for my customers but in terms of people like me how do you walk that line in terms of like offering the end customer this quality service and saying that you're going to you know be um okay. a uh there for the dealers you know primarily That's a great question and we've thought a lot about it and we treaded very carefully before we decided to sell anything online really we make 99 percent of our revenue through our dealers you have been prolific in terms of selling the higher end instruments but here's our our challenge is is that you are one yeah. of a million guys that do what you do most of our dealers don't have the resources to to sell higher end instruments with sound samples and great visuals like you do. So as a result of that, we're but not really guys... having our day in court, but here's the thing, we're selling our instruments at at a high percentage above map and in terms of stock issues then we just have to we just have to communicate better and faster in terms of making sure you have yeah. the stock that you need because I don't want to we're not looking to compete with you. But you're going to you're going to ideally serve us like better. we we have this flow yeah. of the the instruments i mean it's just it's it doesn't always work out like that and sometimes things are more popular than we can perceive and it's logistics have, yeah, yeah it's all where logistics. we ship to hawaii but, in the mainland but though. it's also the fact that like um it's not just logistics in the sense that like this line is going to continue to be popular and pick up over the next few years and you guys will get to a point to where more than just you know uh your app you know your your store like myself that's gonna be really 100 percent ukulele and all into it is going to be supporting it and you'll have other other people in places but you're you're in petaluma california building there's a finite amount of production you're gonna be able to come out with too you know so we're talking just and you're talking about the elites this is what the conversation and, and yeah is. the conversation is just about the elites but um but I, I guess the question that i'm getting to is like um i'm, I'm i or maybe I'm wondering is like if that's kind of built in like because you guys prices are really good so it's like is it is it partially like knowing that like a percentage of the sales are going to come direct so you can afford to kind of do that like if if all of the elite sales went to at went to at dealer pricing to dealers would it is that business model work or is that kind of built into it well because it's got to work for everybody on all ends. You what's know? not and I sustainable? Understand what? What's not sustainable is selling, working in California, and yeah. if you can guess what the taxes are and the I cost mean, of living is, must be really high. It absolutely as it and is here. And all. I think that what what we're realizing is is that uh, if we're going to continue and be successful, we need to keep making beautiful instruments, the best possible instruments. It's not going to be a cheap date, and so, in that sense, that I think that uh, our dealers, our, our dealers, our dealers are going to be able, if they understand 
we're not going to sell a $700 or $500 American made instrument. I don't know how to do that. Um, I, I help Mike run the company. I don't know where to find people that I mean, can you, work that's what under you guys minimum have been wage. trying to do. Maybe yeah. it's been a lost leader, you know, I, go ahead, Mike. You yeah. Want to... I mean, really it's been more of a passion. It, it's, it, that's it, exactly it didn't start right. out. It wasn't like, wow, we just want to make money doing this thing. It was like, we really want to do this. We want to build instruments ourselves. We feel like we can do it. It's going to add to kind of complete the, the company and what we can do. Yeah. Now it's come into the, now that people like them and we're building more, it, it does come into, you've got to support it. Yeah. And it's got to, you know, and I think. We want to keep the lights on with that part of our company. We're not going to enrich ourselves with the United States production at this point, but we do want it to at least be sustainable. Yeah. And it, it helps. I, I mean, this yeah. place here is primarily paid for through the import line. Uh, as far as, I mean, we're in the um, building where Koalau Customs are built. But um, if it wasn't for the Pono line kind of subsidizing it, uh, Sure. It would be in Noah's garage where <laughs> coal owls were built or whatever. I, I, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not like he wouldn't still be it's making the same, amazing on the same music. page. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. but there's a, you know, it's like we had to do it because it, it was just who we were. We, I could not do it. And it, it adds to the whole, the whole company. I mean, it's like, we and, wanted to be kind of a complete company. And they can contact you guys and ask all these things. Sure. And if you're going to spend an hour with a customer that you guys are talking with, it kind of seems natural. If you want to buy it, you can. And it's going to be a little more expensive. But there is the dealers that are going to, you know, they're going to yeah. be honest. You can buy a $2,000 instrument. You can buy a $39.99 instrument from Kala. It's a, we have expanded our audience. We've expanded our price point. I mean, we're trying to cover a lot of ground in terms of instruments and maybe maybe it's too much ground but i don't know i i think the category ukulele itself has expanded so dramatically that from the very bottom price point to get people into playing to people that have been playing some time that have the resources to purchase a expensive instrument it's all it's all who we are we're we're in the that our customers are that vast and wide that we feel like we have to build this. But in terms of, you know, back to selling, I think we have a very limited customer base that's selling the elites, because frankly, we can't produce enough. We've learned how to you make know. good instruments. We haven't learned how to make a lot of them quickly. Well, and I that's mean, because they, that's because if you're going to make I mean, really good instruments, yeah. we're not aut we're not automated. We don't have robots. We have real human beings. That and, and there's nothing against automation, but right now. But I, at some yeah. point, you guys decided to become a dealer for elites. Yes. And it's it's like I looked. There's like an MSRP, and then you guys just it's like I'm on the manufacturer website. What is Manufacturer suggested retail price if the manufacturer is like right. It's it's isn't it listed above map? So that's no. I, well, okay. What is MSRP? Explain what what it is. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's the it's the one you cross off. <laughs> Thank you. No, what's crazy? Uh, like what you were saying is like you're not just a, a company just doing it for money, which is why you have this. I mean, it's a suggested line. retail yeah. price. I I I think. Really, I'm going to do a shameless, absolutely shameless commercial. It's like you buy it even at our suggested retail price, you're getting a ridiculous deal. If we just shut the lights off today, we would be making money. We're, you're, the no, product takes off. Everybody like a understands lot. that, but then, like, you know, like we will put on our website, look, the manufacturer's suggested retail price is $199.99, but yeah. we're selling it for $149.99. But then you go onto the manufacturer's website and it shows, Manufacturer suggested retail price one ninety nine ninety nine. We're selling it for one fifty nine. It's like, well, who's suggesting what? But you know, I'm just. It's just kind of the the way everybody's done it. And yeah. But I really we're operating at a, at map mean is more significant of that's the reality. Yeah. In, in today's day and age, is yeah. what what everybody's. Online, it's a street price map, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> 
is what everybody's operating at. It works. Really I think you well. do retail to 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 offer a discount and go look how nice exactly. we are to you to offer this big discount. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could inflate retail and then discount fifty percent and go look how nice we are. But it's it's just a bunch of it's it's BS. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I used to. I was talking about that earlier. As far as I used to walk into Music Mac uh, when it was here in Hawaii, uh, before we had the uh, Guitar Center. And but anyways, with their severe discounts. Yeah, there, there would be there would be a you know a huge price tag about the size of a piece of paper. It would be like one it was probably price piece of paper slashed off. Then it was week. another price slashed off. And then when I saw the last one, I'm like, off. Wow, look at all that money I saved. And it, it, it does make sense. And it does make sense in the sense where. The there is someone that is yeah. willing to pay for that because there's models out there that actually do cost that much and yeah but was that I mean, was that I, only I, price cuts on the, the I mean music I understand all yeah, that yeah. <laughs> I guess the point is like you know it used to be to where manufacturers had websites that just had the manufacturer's suggested retail price on there and maybe it's built into the the e-commerce no I think it's the direction of the future the the big will eat the little and we're gonna just fight our way through it without getting swallowed. But I think like you're going to have more and more. It's going to be like Amazon and a few different people selling a ton of stuff. And then the manufacturers are going to figure out how to con- connect with the you know end what? users I think more than ever. The one thing that ever. will survive think- is the companies that will talk to you. Because mm. every time you get to a company and you get to a phone call that's going to be like, for blah 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 press yeah. three four two and you go through the same thing someone just hangs up and is pissed off you know what talking to humans is makes a big difference oh I, huge I feel you like. know, that can make or break i'll take that to heart because i think oh. you're absolutely correct with that and and when you think about it sack there's such a lot there's larger companies they don't do that, but they can do. They have the resources. Yeah, they do, and that's what's kind of irritating. I'm like, like we deal with FedEx and UPS, and sometimes I just want to talk to someone about a pack. I don't want to have to listen to five There's different five like to um, um, machines to to get to the point where I want to get to. You know, yeah. someone else could Our just like press goals. another button that Please. works there. It, no, the it, communication it, part is yeah. like they they try less on communication. Communication is crucial. Wow. No, yeah. I think that the reason so this resonates for me is because. I hate that too. Yeah, and I go crazy with my salespeople. Pick up the. Fu- I want people to talk on yeah, the phone. Yeah, talk it. Yeah, or I mean, get up and go talk to somebody. We're eventually going to have robots faster. building the ukes, so we got to do something. <laughs> somebody, people got to. Yeah, what are we going to do with people? They got to do something, right? Hey, I want you to talk about that, actually, Mike. What have you seen coming up in, in especially in Asia and the factories? Because you've been going to these factories for many, many years now, and it's getting kind of impressive in terms of. Uh, the level of automation and I mean the I, you know it's kind of uh, um, less glamorous than saying handmade or you know but the consistency kind of is nice I gotta say it's nice to yeah get a consistent I wouldn't say product. the majority of factories have automated but certainly the the larger ones the ones that have been around a little bit longer have realized that uh, that they have to I mean number one there is a labor shortage there or maybe it's people are less willing to do that type of work it's very physical um, woodworking and um, and frankly you know a machine can do it the same every time I mean you look at Taylor as a prime example of, I think Taylor kind of um, set the pace for a lot of people or you know set the model for people in terms of a factory made instrument highly automated that consistently sounds great i don't know as far as call is concerned that that has helped tremendously with the consistency in terms of uh the elite line well no not not elite at all imports if we're talking about oh, um, factories okay. in asia it's the the automation has led to right 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 i was talking about that but then i was kind of thinking that because i know you worked with bob on getting your guys ub finish and stuff like that well yeah like i that. mean but, and i i know also you kind of like reviewed lean and different methods of manufacturing yeah i mean the elites are completely hand built i mean i would say there's uh i mean we use jigs and tools and, right, but, right, but right. they're really truly a hand built instrument um, but you're talking about next level robot arms picking up the <laughs> instrument to Wait, buff it um, out can i can i ask a quick question sorry to interrupt um 
because I found myself stumbling trying to explain this to a customer. They're like, "Is this hand built?" And I'm like, "When I, uh, the elites start, or the imports? Uh, the imports. When I, when, I, when when I started thinking hand built, I'm like, I know there's hands involved, but like how much? <laughs> like what is what what does hand built actually mean? Because sometimes I get a little bit confused on uh, uh, explaining. Kind of getting kind of vague because yeah. there's definitely hands involved. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's would absolutely say. both. It's Aratani would always say it. They're all hand built. That, and I was like, yeah, I mean, they're partially made by machine, but it's like somebody has to control. Right, so what do you think a customer these... is actually asking when they say, is this hand built? It's in a garage. Like, or all hands, no tools. Guy, cutting wood with a saw. And a I mean, look, like, if it was I have completely hands, hand built, yeah, it asking? would be <laughs> a couple thousand dollars for an MKS, you know. I mean. Well, yeah, and that's, I what mean, I, <laughs> that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm kind of curious because I, you know, I didn't yeah. ask them, like, are you talking yes, about did Mike they use Upton machines? made it with his hands. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's, I mean, that, and that's what I want to I want to qualify the question. I wonder what they're thinking. Are they – I wonder I wonder if they're thinking, does this speak to the issue of quality right. regarding the hand or the machine? It is. But then and, – And I think that the best way to answer it is that – is with a question. What do you mean by that? Are do you is this speaking to the quality? And they're saying, yeah, I want an instrument that has the best quality. And uh, do you equate quality with hands? Yes, I do. Then you're, then you're partially correct, because a, a machine, certain machines will have the same results all the time. And there's absolute um, precision. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I just say, right? yeah, of course, check yeah. it out, hand built. <laughs> so, but here's the thing: it's a sec. It's come on, guys. It's sexier to say it's hand built. Because no matter, even though I'm right, the customer thinks this, I mean, and you're trying to battle the customer's variations right? of how much of your hands. It's like back before there were jigs. Was it more handmade? When well, wasn't that like, term handmade? Wasn't that more of like for it's marketing like marketing and stuff? Like, every well, step along the way has been to make it more consistent. You, you know what? I'd rather dig a 50 foot hole <laughs> with a with a spat with a little uh, spatula than a jackhammer. I, because I want the quality of the hole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah. Let's think this through a little bit. I know. That jackhammer is just taking out everything. Come yeah. on. But but I do think, but here's we're the thing I think we're customers spooning are going our grave to. Here. Yeah. In terms of the, in terms of the uh, precision yes. and uh, where a machine, can, a, can a, what part can a machine do? I think what a machine can do are the things that, the things that require like a millimeter of sanding or something that last bit of finishing a machine can't do that at this point maybe at some point it will but there's a lot that it can do to help quicken the process and that may, might be a better answer i don't know i mean because it's it's been a long time since i've just been building but it's like even when i was it was like you know nowhere near um even what they're doing now with Colau in terms of cnc work and stuff so yeah so wait if you use this cnc you're not hand built. Yeah, you know so what I mean? that's what uh, I mean. Almost everybody's doing a CNC neck at so this point. At I, least I guess I'm asking down. you, Andrew. What do you want me to tell our customers? What do you want me to tell our customers when they ask, hand "Is this hand built?" Hell yes. yeah! Hell yeah! Human hands. Yeah. <laughs> are these well, I can say with the elites, with, without people, absolutely, elites are built. Uh, other than the necks. Um, are with with hands and but I think the only reason that is is because I think we need to understand we're still learning how to build first you want to learn how to do it right once you learn how to do it right then you can do it fast and then when you, teach you do the it robots right you can have you can right. you can't <laughs> you have to enter the data into the CNC machine right yeah, yeah, yeah. and we can, you have to make sure that before uh, and there's you still something great. beyond all that you know no and but I, I, I mean, think you guys will still have the the luthier tap everything the is completely yeah. hand done except you know the neck is uh yeah cnc'd but i mean everything else is completely hand done and and frankly i'd, I'd like to automate a lot sure. more because it would save sure save yeah. costs and um that's just a good thing to to economize in that way but but this is where we're at i mean we're, yeah and, and you know we're just trying to keep up with demand and and then but it has been changing a lot in terms of like uh, some of the Asian factories and their level of automation. No, they're they're automating because they they just can't keep the workforce to the you know for some of the hard woodworking and then you get into finishing, spraying for sure the you know uh, spray ro robots and uh, even buffing and sanding now you're seeing automatic sanders because that's that's one of the most physical jobs is the sanding. I mean that just is and you don't be done consistently correct yeah, yeah you, so you're not over sanding these robots will do uh 
just a perfect job. But with the time, elites, if yeah. you want the romance and your vision of somebody with a plane and the curly wood, that's happening in California right Right, now. right. That slow mo shot with all the. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, part of that is that, that's an absolute reality. I right mean, now. I look at some of the import models and I don't think they're far off from uh, that same sort of romance. Yeah. Bromance. <laughs> Bro <-man. laughs> However, you feel towards your instrument. Well, I mean, well, there's something to say about how consistent the colors are because every time I grab a STG or SMHT, I know exactly what I'm going to get. Like as that far last as all solid flame <clears throat> maple import, that thing is pretty sexy. I mean, the yeah. wood paduke yeah. bindings and premium solid very, flame. Very tasteful. Can't Keys. imagine there not being some human hands involved in making that thing. Oh, there is. There yeah. absolutely is. But there's certain processes that are automated, and the higher precision, the higher precision thing. Is, there's there's a certain amount of hand. There's a lot of hand sanding that goes on. Um, yeah, I mean, they, the robots still can't get into those corners and uh, you know do some of the the fine and of yeah. course binding or the and final some setup appoint, appointments and stuff. And assembly, you know. But yeah. the cutting, the cutting of wood, the bending of side, you know, um, and it's most just of the, the next you know. step from when we invented band saws and drum sanders and all of the, you know, I mean, it's, it's nothing that is, uh, I mean, it's just tools to get better. And, you know, when I think back to these music Mac ukes that Honer was putting out when you first <laughs> moved over here, Mike. That you were slang in there. That was some sad stuff compared to like what you got going on now for the same price. Yeah, I, I had uh, I found one somewhere no and way. it was pretty bad. Yeah, but, like but it was better than a lot of things that were around at the time. <laughs> and so, well, but yeah. you know we had Maybe, we had to do a lot of yeah. quick improvements because, um, you know, coming here it, it was expected. You know, they weren't horrible. They just weren't. Three hundred dollar ukes by today's standards. If you look at a three hundred dollar collar now compared to what? It no, was I, at I don't that think point. people realize the quality that they're getting. No, um, they don't. They hundred percent don't. Because I mean, not not just with our brand, but a lot of other brands. Sure, and people it, almost want to demonize like what China's doing no, in terms I mean, of production, but it's like they're doing a great we're job. We're the beneficiaries. Oh, yeah. of Super good job, and I I, I have to def def defend China all the time because like sometimes people in a lot of art people too are there working with them i mean we're yeah i know i know that's but a good I, point andrew and, that's a good point and but you can I, buy I just get a hawaiian offended, made offended when people here <coughs> made by a chinese person living in hawaii but when people say like <laughs> oh i don't want that china made stuff i'm like look at what you're wearing or like what is your phone where does your phone oh, come from the i know uh, the shirt on your, your back pants? i know like, i mean like i would shoes? like to like i could see i know it's many you can look at the apple products and see there's some precision happening in those factories well but. it's just it just kind of it's just kind of hurts it's when the whole gamut complains. you know but and the intellectual I mean, authority happened here it, originally it was done with human hands and there's precision and again you can't enter the data in until in the and the the stats and the what do you mean by that though? the I intellectual guess, authority i mean i guess the issue is is that somebody has to design the instrument uh, and before you can automate it someone has to think about it and create it so sure. the, that when i say intellectual authority somebody created it and then from that point and created the design and then at that point you can hand it over to we have to put the data in the in the so you guys see what there. you're going to come up on now we have a uh not a full container partial container coming over from Maloa direct to us here and and i think like as much as we're like facing our challenges on our side you guys are going to face your challenges on your side by more and more companies over there reaching out directly instead of uh, manufacturers but to music stores individually even so it's gonna it's gonna i don't know have you thought about that wow. or has that been something that you even want to think about <laughs> i want it no, that's a see, great question we see it all the time i mean so yeah. I mean, I mean, there's stores with their, you know, own branded, you know, especially with entry level stuff where it's like but you can. You know what? Like, like how, what I was saying earlier about the human aspect, I feel like Kala and everyone at Kala, I, I feel like they do enough on the communication side to where as much as markets can change and whatnot, I feel I always feel like if you're going to talk to the, the customer service side is going to be your your end point you yeah. know someone's gonna have to make that sale at the end 
someone's going to have to want it. But as far as the the, the overall, um, even like the backs, like the warranty side, the communication side, someone wanting to get in touch with you. Yeah. You know, like that kind of stuff, I think will transcend more than maybe some of the prices and trends because I feel like customers want someone to talk to. They want someone to to, to hear it from, you know what? It's, yeah, and it's just like, like you have to... We're kind of young in the in the market in the sense that it's been only been in the last five years or so that a lot of markets have picked up distributors for ukulele at all, you know? So it's like at what point do they not just start communicating directly with factories and call it by a different name? Yeah, but who's going to contact Malo? all of Malo? the groundwork that you... No, 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 it's not that. But like every dealer just like us is going to NAM, right? And, yeah. and uh, you know, we're having these conversations that led to us picking up a container of instruments directly from them. But, and you know, I mean, obviously not every company is going to be as forward looking at, as us maybe in this realm. But, you know, I mean, it's something for you guys to continue to think about, especially... I would think when it comes to distributors and people buying large amounts, people that, I mean, there's a lot of people um, like us even that like enjoy the cash flow side of not investing in stuff by the container and trying to get, you know, things on that level. It's hard to do. It's just hard to do. Um, I hear some static going on. You know what? My my headphones almost fell and I grabbed it really fast. That was me. You guys hear that? You never know. Maybe uh, the Chinese are developing customer service robots <laughs> with artificial intelligence, and they just learn. There's no way they can to. answer a question. Yeah. Like, Not yet. Hey, but. hey, robot. What's your favorite tone wood? <laughs> uh, let me check. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, I like, I'll how, get back how much to you. the internet? And how much have we seen the uh, global market economy? Yeah, Battery? Yeah, in there. Change over the last five yeah, like, years. If you want them to answer, it's, it's going to have to come. Ten years. No, I can wait. That would be a good time to qualify the question and to understand it better because it sounds like maybe you can help me from what you heard. It sounded like you were saying, what do you think about Chinese factories going directly to the end user or to the dealer? Is that what you're talking I'm just, about? Well, I, I'm just looking at the what's I mean, going to happen. You just said you're going to get a container of... I mean, uh, that Chinese we're an example use a of a brand that I know and I yeah. know where they're made at a greatly reduced price. It's and, kind of amazing. And then you're going to sell them to an end user with quite a bit of margin in there. So, I mean, to us, wow, you know, I, I, so, I've spent 15 years promoting a brand from nothing and going to China, you know, I don't know, 60, know. 70 times. To, to literally when they never knew anything about ukulele to teach them or be part of the teaching process as to how to build an ukulele and bring in a brand that seeded many other brands to start. Now, I'm not claiming to have, I mean, the Hawaiian brands were here, but as far as an import line, we were one of the first, and first with Lonnie Kai when I was with Honer starting in 1998 and then with Kala to literally get ukulele going, and especially in China, to get them built right. I mean, bringing a Martin tenor, a Martin soprano, because they had no idea. They thought they were building a small guitar. They use the same braces, the same tops, the same wood. Yeah. And they were building a small guitar and to educate them trip after trip to how to build an ukulele. Which so the investment, energy. personal investment yeah. in my life and mm. hours spent I, that's how I that. feel when and I, then to see, I mean, to, you know, so there, there's yeah. a little bit of angst in that. Okay, now these guys, you know, after doing all that, now they're going to come right, to what, what, right into, in, but, into the but market. I mean, do you, in, do you uh, expect short like change? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but okay, here's the thing: it's like, um, like for instance, they're asking me right now, like, um, either you take you know, a larger amount and become the distributor or there's somebody on the East Coast that wants to become a distributor. So I mean, the bottom line is like, it's not, if it's not, I mean, we're just one small store. I bring it up not to throw it in your face like that at all because I, I hear you and your frustration is kind of 
what I feel when I'm looking at like a lot of different stores around the world kind of copying a business model that we were doing a decade ago mm. that um, that had us going strong. And now we're just kind of muddled in the waters of everybody else. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, hey, to not control the variable. You know, we kind of met did this Owen together. Holt and created yeah. the U-Base and now everybody's got a right. U-Base. Kala was the, uh, the original U-Base, right? So a lot of people now come in asking if you have U bases, but they mean any U bases. It's like it's like Kleenex. They mean, yeah. do you have tissue? But but they're saying, do you have U base? You know what I mean? Like yeah. we have a ukulele base, yes, but U base is cop. that. That's one that's got to really hurt when you see everybody <laughs> making a U base because that's kind of distinct. You mean, know, it, it, you didn't invent the it U-base, hurt for a couple of years, but then I got over it because it was like. No, but that, that's what, what I'm what, like. What, is you it know, still? Is I'm the it only still, one that's you put upset it upset about map, this. But yeah. So I mean, so well, you know, you're right though. You have to, you have to just keep going. Not controllable variable. And you're all, you really are only as good as your last uh, ukulele, you know, or your yeah. Really. But it, did, did it change so, the way no, you thought about mean. the whole line as far as when when you saw other people uh, coming out with their versions of it, and, and did you start? Oh, he I just mean, said he had to kind of get over it. <laughs> I had to get over it, but you can only do what you can do. I mean, no, you as, can't... as far as thinking about the line, did you start thinking like, oh, we got to like now change it or like... Uh, we you have know, more variety. We have a larger selection. And we just, when we have to be, I think the main thing is we have to produce the best product and we can't change the variable that other people are copying us. That's a non-controllable variable. But the only variable we can change is let's come out with new interesting woods and make sure that our pickup is the best and that the rate of return is the lowest and that people have a great experience. And Zach, you said it the best that if there's an issue, if you have a question, you have a human being you can speak to. I mean, our branding, the main theme, and this is not a theme that we just set up in a marketing room and came up with. This is what we hear from our customers. It's quality in that there's very few problems with the product and value that uh, it may not be the the least expensive product that you'll find, but for what you're getting, you're getting the best thing for your money, and we have to be consistent with that. So that's what the variable we can control. Yeah. But it, I mean, and the address, it, it, well, it is, it, it's a conversation you know, we have all the time. I, like, you know, I feel like it's irritating. I, no, I, I feel like I, I might be um, coming across a little bit confrontational or irritational or and, not at all. It, it's, it's what just, we talk about a lot. It's like you know? I, I'm almost like you guys have really nailed it in so many ways, and. We've been uh, getting orders every week for many years. So it's like, I'm just looking forward and trying to see how both of us as respective companies that actually operate with Aloha and are yeah. trying to be the best. Like, it's, it's interesting because like I was thinking about it the other day in terms of what, like if I would ever get out of this thing and it's like, I kind of weirdly enough feel obligated to this community in a way <laughs> that I mean like I don't technically have any obligations to the ukulele community but then I do I feel it you know and it's I feel like this is kind of like my life path and I feel that same kind of vibe from from Mike Upton since I've known him for the past almost 20 years and Pat that I've known for over a decade and you you know many many years I've known you too Dave you know I mean you guys are people truly and sincerely trying to give the best support make the best products make the best choices and um, and I, I appreciate you guys coming down today to have this conversation with us and I hope it didn't seem like I was kind of badgering you with like the I don't know the type of issues but to me it's like these are I mean we can uh, listen we're we're straight up like real about things when i tell people that these new elites are awesome value amazing for sub two thousand dollars this is this is golden right here you know but at the same time we have to be able to talk about business and how things can be kind of weird and hard and constantly changing and all those kind of things you know no you're spot on the issues that you talked about especially the U-Base, we talk about that all the time. So um, there's no, it's it's something that we're already aware of. I just think that we're trying to reconcile some of these realities, you know, and just saying, hey, this is I a feel cost like variable. I we pissed Mike off. 
<laughs> he walked out. No, he just, I think he went to the. I think he used was using the little boys' room. That's okay, okay, just yeah. making sure. No, okay, he's he's say, good. It's he's like good. an automatic um, automatic automobile manufacturer. It's like you come up with a crossover SUV and like, oh, there's Nissan. They have one too now. I mean, it's oh, a copycat then, world. I mean, yeah. everybody, everything. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, it, it goes like it's like even medicine, right? After so many years, like, oh, the patents run out. We're gonna yeah. have our generic version. Yeah, but I mean, it's just like that's just the it's way true. of the world. I mean, even in happen. sports, like someone uh, has a new uh, uh, a system. I I relate everything to sports for some reason. Just just how I am, but it's just like it's a copycat league. That's what everyone says. Like something works, you copy it because guess what? They're doing what works. So competition. Yeah, you competition, but then also like you know that something is making sense there. They're they're you know it's working for a certain amount of people or it has this you know effect i was watching the nba finals this last time and i was just like i never remember so many three-pointers like oh that's because you're watching golden back State, when i was I a mean, kid oh yeah man. it was like it's three uptown, pointers brother. maybe yeah. a couple times during a game people would be now it's, it's a like different league man every other drive so half, just half shooting shot is changed, like average <laughs> he changed the game man the, the whole game yeah. has changed the past five years but i think the analytics too and them kind of you know like how things go I don't know. People study it and see what works. I mean, that's, that's like that's every do. business, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what people are doing. Right? Oh, this is selling. It's hot. It's new. I Let's just feel it. like the change is exponential. So it's like more imperative for companies like ourselves to be like always looking forward and always looking at what's oh, absolutely. going on and how we can remain relevant and profitable so that we can keep doing what we're doing and serving the communities that we're serving. Because I know... I know we are, you know, I mean, we have customers out there that are thankful to both of our companies for being in business. And it's our job to make sure we continue to stay in business, you know, but, um, but I am genuinely super impressed with the direction that the elite line has gone. Uh, the imports have always been a hit, so that's no news, but, and it's still, and it, and it continues to be just because we're like it's I so mean, consistent the sample for we us. Got, it's so like, easy for us like to the, sell. The last model you guys released at um, the Summer Nam, or one of them, the um, Solid Mahogany with the long neck. We we got one of them and we sampled it. It's, it's good. I mean, it's really good, really good for the price. So, I mean, you guys are on top of the game now. I'm just uh, kind of throwing stuff at you to make sure you stay on top. Of <laughs> it's not it's not going to be easy. Don't screw up. But tomorrow, we can have this ready for you. Just yeah. call up Pat. Hey, Pat, sorry, man. We're out of I don't of know if moment. Mauna Loa is going to be able to answer your text <laughs> messages while they're on vacation. Maybe like not. I, do. I mean, like, you know, this is still yet to be seen. I, I, I have no idea or, what I'm going to do. Or on a with. Saturday because at 2 a.m. Like <laughs> I mean, I like, if, uh, we, uh, yeah. They'll be able to do that. Oh, don't start me with me, Pat. I'll get going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. But I know our relationship and our business either. partnership yeah. with you guys has been beneficial and we'll keep going as we I mean, that's is. where customer service Just want to let rule. you guys know if you yeah. start, you know, listing more products on your website, I might get more containers from how low. <laughs> I mean, but but you think about like when we thought about MGM, like when you think about how he was, he he. he he would try. He would bend over backwards. He would oh, try. Yeah, his, his job was twenty four seven. Yeah, he would like, always be at home. Like, and that's what I'm saying. I think this is going to transcend everything. It's just going to be how much you want to like help the people out there. You know, so how much you want to going to going to be with Mike. He always had this "I'm about to die" kind of attitude. Like, I just had to pay a fine on the sign that he had made for Holly Eva because he didn't get the permit done right. But nothing was ever like, I don't know. He always just was kind of like on my way out. <laughs> Breaking all the rules and live as, yeah. as if he was very generous. Was really, he like, was very loving. Like Walter White, <laughs> but <laughs> like Walter White, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. That's I'm, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to end it. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Sell meth, whatever. Do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, basically. But Mike found ukuleles, which is oh man, a much better drug. I miss. Guess make me want to watch yeah. Breaking Bad from the first. Uh, I I, I binge just watch it again. I just restarted it. That's why it's in my head. Yeah. You know, anytime you're watching Netflix, you start relating to things that you're. That it's may, amazing that maybe, how uh, relate to your own life. You know. 
be, people's situations. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, become it's quite <laughs> empathetic. <laughs> Breaking Bad, there's some some real life lessons there, right? <laughs> I know. I, yeah, it comes down sucks. to that. It's just the struggle to survive and money, you know. Yeah. And and uh, I guess some people kind of get uh, captured up in that and taken away, but um, but it starts from just a survival type of thing. You know, if you think about the beginning of that, it was to take care of, to make sure that after yeah. he died, his his son had the health care that he needed and all that. And like, you know, but it gets like t- he got detoured. Away. He yeah. got a little detoured. Yeah, we would yeah, all yeah. agree. You know, yeah. but you know, like right, I was saying the about the original was good. The, you know, you know, I, I the, guess look at look at someone like Corey. Like he can make anything sound good. You know what I mean? So like sometimes we get so caught up in so many other things other than like the passion is in. I mean, it's a musical instrument. It's making it's making sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's why we fall in love with. It. That's why you know someone like Corey, like he's gonna bring these. He things can make out. anything sound good, but some sound better than others. Well, well, yeah. Some and sometimes I think we get so caught up in like like oh, it has the, this, it has that. But anything details. he plays is gonna sound good. Yeah, it sounds so, good. So so right? sometimes yeah. I think as a well. you know, I don't that know. telling our customers I, I feel that like a player like me almost like benefits more from the quality. Um, cause you're right. Like Corey can pick up an import and sound just as beautiful, but I kind of need those little details and to keep inspired. I don't know. I mean, there's definitely something to, to be had with these instruments. Like, you know, these new torrified awesome. ebony ones, like those are pretty Huge. bad. I mean, I like the maple one more than the cedar. You that's think just, so? I mean, that's my opinion. It's not cedar, bro. It it's torrified spruce. Torrified spruce. It just looks like that. cedar. Everything is subjective. And that's another thing, too, that I, like, I try and tell customers, what's the best? Like, there, there's no such thing as the best because yeah. it'll change upon every single person you talk to what the best is. That's when you have to pull out the salesman. This one right here. Yeah, this one. You want to it, it right now? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Bye. Anyways, but yeah. I mean, customer service is, is what I think... A lot of companies will need to will need to do in order to survive. I feel like we've talked a lot. Like, is there some stuff that you guys want to share with our um, customers or our listeners before we head out? Say, keep an eye out out for that elite SSTU. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I would like to meet whoever. would listen to this whole podcast in its entirety. So well, wait for, yeah. wait you, can, you can yeah. contact me at Mike, M I K E, at K A L A B R A N D dot com. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. What was the email address again? Mike, M I K E, at K A L A B R A N D dot com. Mike at callerbrand dot com. Beautiful. Any, so that, any caller related owner, questions. founder yeah. questions? of the business opening himself up there to inquiries i mean and it wouldn't be hard wonderful. to figure out that's my email that's the best yeah. well, sure. customer service now no, no, what kind of go. robots you got running yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's no you'll, robot you'll get a, you'll yeah. get a real reply yeah, yeah. but again 50 well, dollars or less this is mike yeah, yeah. little do you know this is one of, <laughs> this is one of four mike <laughs> yeah. yeah. oh this yeah <laughs> the other one's at the europe uh you think he went to the bathroom no the other one just yeah yeah no but charge the other one because i mean back to just i mean people that are fans of call it thank you for being a fan and you know we work really hard to do what we do and uh and you know what's really cool is that uh there's a lot of people that i've met just from my short time i've been in a store we got a new store in kakaako that you guys visit uh i think today awesome store but um we won't we only been there since october of last year but even uh the folks that come through that that they haven't bought anything from us, they'll be like, I have a kala. I have a kala. Like, there's so many people oh, out there that, dude, that say they have a kala. You must have a gajillion kalas in but the world. But you know what's that's funny is that thing. the next step up is still a kala. And that's what's so just awesome. Keep going, man. Yeah, Let's exactly. And that's what's so that's, cool. But that's what's, that is that was the our game idea. plan. That's yeah, the idea. I, and, and it's but, just like you yeah, can walk right. the whole step up that word in the kala brand, you know? When, when you guys established this thing in California, you know, kala is now... People don't know what to think. It's like everything from the most affordable to high end. No, but then that sets you apart from all the, you know, I'm not going to name any brands, but there's there's a lot of affordable ones that don't aren't also making high caliber ones for sure. You know, 
they're just out there to just be there you know to make stuff to impress one person like oh they have this kind of um yeah. colorful looking and there'll be customers for those model. but then there's a <laughs> core passionate yeah, like, you customer that i think is going to still have some loyalty to some og people trying their heart out like you guys and us you know yeah, cause you guys and i think that's like our people and if somebody loyalty. emails you you know saying they actually listened through all the jibber jabber of this thing <laughs> yeah I think it's, it's going to be the I'll answer and I'll the, congratulate you. 100%. And, Every and time I think yeah. a customer is not going to acknowledge it'll be your there's comments at the it's very like end. The quality of the, the customer is yeah. also something, you know, and I think like there's a certain customer that we keep seeing year after year, you know. No, and there's so many people that are interested in what they're buying from or who they're buying from that that sometimes even that will make the sale more so than the plain side. They want to know who who are they buying from. Yeah. But you brought up an interesting subject in the beginning about handmade versus automated. And I think that's a significant s- subject because it's real and it, it's, it's, this is not just within our industry making musical instruments. It's, it transcends that uh, into other consumer products. For sure. For sure. How much percent would you say is um, human that, interacting instead of just a, like at least? I think with at least 100%, I think with the imports, probably 50%. 50-50 maybe that's the best but rough the, guess with imports yeah but there's like I the mean there's time that goes into like shaping there's people touching those like, instruments I, every part. Oh, yeah. I mean yeah. they're moving it from station to station it's the machine yet, would be doing just, the work yeah. but people are moving them around I, you're never as far as musical like, instruments go you're never going to replace people that are going to always be involved yeah. it's just the nature of that mm-hmm. instrument it's but up until a I mean, when you like yeah, you when you're book matching and you're, I mean, there's just too there's much. Just, yeah. It's not an iPad. It's gonna still no. I need mean, it's not attention. a Volkswagen. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but a machine. Sometimes you can use a machine that applies the glue. Oh the yeah, fingerboard on the neck. Yeah, yeah. But that 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 bead of glue. Someone, if imagine someone doing that perfectly. Someone had to do that perfectly first before you could program the machine. Yeah, to you do would it have perfectly. to create a yeah. machine specifically. For that, but then there are machines yeah. in China yeah, I mean, that are it's bending. Kind, it's science, kind of good right? that yeah. there's like yeah, machines that's true. doing it's some things. True. Like we shouldn't even bother wasting our time. I mean, ideally, we get to a place to where like the mundane types of manufacturing that just eroded people's bodies over time for them to be able to survive are mostly taken by machines that we are able to benefit from from some sort of like a, I don't know I think there's got to be some sort of a, a basic income or some sort of a s- supplement of like subsidies once things get fully automated I mean we're talking maybe a decade or two in the future but I think there, there'll be more time to maybe be creative maybe we can play music more I mean you know maybe we don't have to slave away I'll just make a machine that can play music for As us. As a collective society, <laughs> yeah. yeah. CD player. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we should or just do. chill out and Here, not work 15-hour days and maybe strum on our uke a little bit more. You know, yeah, you know I mean, these driving are things uh, through the freeway kind of on your Tesla, through. you know, while driving yourself, you could just... <laughs> yeah. You could be shredding. Maybe or, that's or not the time, like but yeah, see, I mean, you know... No, no, like you like see the guys that. taking, like, naps on their Teslas on the freeway. They could be the they could be playing ukuleles instead of hey napping. read a book play a musical instrument yeah. that's that I, we don't need to be on our iPhones all the time we can yeah. Yeah. do something using our, our oh brain. grandpa what do you know <laughs> <laughs> unless you're on the color brand app yeah hey. you guys got yeah. the app you guys got all this stuff yeah. man that app is great you're cutting edge you got the hipster Instagram ads with all the buttons and yeah you guys are on it you know. You're my heroes in a lot of ways. So I appreciate you. The, I appreciate the long term support. You know, I know it takes a lot of investment, and somebody's got to stick his balls on the line, like, call, like Mr. Upton has done for many years, you know, to try to make good They're products. You know, I mean, it takes a lot of investment and, and it takes, cup, takes some, uh, <laughs> Dude, some, some dice rolling once in a while, maybe, <laughs> but you've done a good job. And uh, I appreciate what you've brought to the ukulele community and i think uh i think our customers feel the same way so keep up the good work guys 
All right. Thank you Thank for you. taking the time um, to come have this contentious argument with me. No, I mean, <laughs> health, healthy discussion. Healthy we got discussion. KP, KM, KD in the house. <laughs> All right.